So I got to share this with you. I was uh, just at the gym and I ran into a friend of mine who is a, um, a personal trainer. Uh, and we were talking about just my new chapter in life and she was like, well, what's different? I said, well, you know what's different is? It's like that creative side of my brain all of a sudden lit up and I've started to see the world in a whole new light. And I'm super excited about it. And what it, she, and she looks at me and she goes, what, what do you mean by that new, li a new light? And I said, well, what is possible? I said, for years I've read books about you know, Metcalf's law, um, Moore's law, um, the evolution of technology, and, and I've, you know, I've watched it happen from that class in 1990 uh, in college where Dr. Strange, believe it or not, that was his name, talked about the internet. And he said, this is, this is the future. It's gonna change everything. And everybody, you know, 99% of the people in there just rolled their eyes and said, whatever, because they couldn't comprehend it. And today, I can't live without the internet. We can't function as a, society, as a global group of people anymore because we're so ingrained into the internet. And I said, it, to me, what's exciting is, it's what is ahead and how fast it's coming. And so she, she was like, well, what do you mean by that? What do you, what do you, what's coming? I said, well, think about your business and how Peloton, the bike company, took off because we were all stuck at home in 2020. And everybody started doing physical workouts, biking, and they were on a screen, they're watching a, a direct, you know, a instructor on a screen, and he was saying, go, go, and stand up, and blah, 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 and everybody bought into it. And Peloton, you know, of course, did real well because of it. Um, but now imagine your business, the, right now how you monetize your business is one person at a time. You have to physically get together with them, and you have to do, spend an hour with them. And that hour, you know, you get paid, you know, whatever you get paid. But when you're not working one-on-one -on -one with somebody, you're not getting paid. And she's like, right. I said, imagine this world where you take all of your data, you know about physical training, and you couple that with all the data in the world on physical trainers, uh, how the body moves, muscle structure, this, that, and the other. And you upload it to a program. And the room over there, which is the yoga room, has these three floor to ceiling panels on three sides of the room. And everybody walks into the room, they enter a code. And what's linked to that code is all your data. A full on body scan, muscle density scan, um, who you are as a personality, diet, all that kind of thing. And you enter that code and you walk into the room, you got 30, 40 people in the room. And this avatar stands up and he's life, he or she is lifelike and says, good morning, welcome to the, you know, seven o'clock morning, uh, you know, calorie burn class. And you start class and the avatar is like, gets you going and you start into a plank position and the avatar says hey Jan get that butt down no cheating and Jan goes okay and the avatar says right on Jan let's give let's give a booyah to Jan and the whole room says booyah and then it does it again to somebody else and it calls people out Meanwhile, this avatar is scanning the room and your physical movements and then taking that data and going out into the universe and taking the best position for you as a person, matching that up for you as a person, and then bringing it back to the avatar and the avatar then shares that with you in the class, just like a live instructor would do, but with limited data. I said that is where physical training will go, in my opinion. That is the possibilities. And because of Moore's Law, who uh, was the founder of, one of the co-founders of Intel, said that, back in the early late 60s, said that every year, the speed of microprocessing will double. And imagine today, 
Imagine a chessboard and every square is a year. We're only halfway through the chessboard. And the speed of, of processing and processing data is exponentially growing and happening. And you are being a part of it. And in the future, say 10 years from now, you will no longer drive, in my opinion, drive a combustion engine car because the government will come in and say, no more combustion engine cars, we've got to save this planet. And actually, you're already seeing this happen in Europe. Go check it out. Um, but instead, you'll have uh, electric cars or some version of electric car. And that electric car will be uh, autonomous. And so, uh, you know, car crashes will go down. Um, you know, car-related accidents will go down. And then parking won't be a problem because you'll just get dropped off at the corner of where you're going and the car will then go and take care of itself based on a pre-programmed or based on a programmed loop that is constantly learning every second. And when you're ready to go, you just push a button about a minute out before you want to be picked up and your car comes around, and picks you up and it takes you where you want to go. We are so close to that happening and the world is moving that much faster because we're able to process data, because we're seeing new technologies like blockchain technology and all of this new stuff and the innovations. I remember years ago, Mark Andreas, who is the founder, inventor of Netscape, if you are that old and you remember one of the first internet browsers, which was Netscape, Mark Andreas made the quote, um, I'm gonna beat it up a little bit, but software, software will eat the world. And you know what, he's right. We are so dependent on that software technology. We're so dependent on the speed of technology and the processing of data. But we're at a point now, and last year in my opinion, was that pivot year where we as people of the world are quickly adopting to that new world and looking for companies to who are changing the world will be the investments of the future. They will be the GEs of my grandpa my grandfather's day. They will be the, um, the companies that we will look back 20, 30 years from now. Of course, I'll be like 80 something, 80, 90 or so. And we'll look back and go, this is just normal. I remember a day when it wasn't. And there'll be generations who have no idea what a combustion engine car is or the fact that you just go in for a cancer treatment and it's a pill or it's a, just a, literally a scan. It's because of technology and the movement of it and the exponential growth that we're in right now. So I'm excited about this, as you can tell. Um, I see a lot of possibilities, but in this new chapter of my life, I've started to see the world in a whole different way. And I've also, seen taking uh, from Ferris Bueller's day off, every so often I just stop and smell the roses. And I would suggest you do the same and just take it all in because it's changing and embrace it and think about it and see how it can benefit you in your life. Anyways, this is not advice. This is just educational. This is my thoughts. So I'd love for you to share your comments below of where you see the world going what, what makes you excited, but also what, why are you fearful of it? And let's just share this journey together. All right, live loud. <laughs>